I'm gonna show you how to sharpen a single bevel Japanese knife with the Hone Rolling Knife Sharpener. Hi to all my subscribers and knife sharpening enthusiasts. Today I'm gonna to give you a very unique video, one you're not gonna find anywhere else on a rolling knife sharpener, we sharpen a Japanese single bevel knife. Now, one of the things you'll hear a lot of knife people say is, oh my God, I would never touch a knife with a rolling knife sharpener. And that's because most of the sharpeners out there that are rolling knife sharpeners are junk. This is the hone. It is absolutely rock solid. It's not gonna break. Diamond discs on each side. They're actually double-sided. We also have a ceramic. We've got a whole line of discs that are provided when you buy the accessories kit, including the angle mates, which are very critical to sharpening this knife. Now, when you sharpen knives, keep in mind, you don't know what angle they are most of the time. If you're an average home cook or someone who's just a knife enthusiast, you're not really sure what angle to use. Well, I happen to know these knives are gonna be around a 13 degree angle, and that means that this has to be set up to 13 degrees, and if you look at the sharpener, it has a 20 and a 15. So it's not gonna work. You don't wanna sharpen a 13 degree knife with a 15 degree sharpener because you're gonna go ahead and re-edge that knife and it's also gonna cause damage because you'll see on here, there's actually a piece across the top here and we won't get into details, it doesn't matter. That's actually part of a texture. If you sharpen that at the wrong angle, you're gonna damage that and it's gonna look like crap and that's why you hear a lot of people saying the rolling sharpener is damaged by knives. Now, normally, I would use probably a belt sharpener on this to sharpen it. However, I did find out a way, because a lot of people ask, can you sharpen Japanese knives? And I said, yes, you can. And that's because these Japanese knives have a normal apex, double-sided on the bevels. So it's really easy to sharpen. However, these as well, you have to be careful because you can go ahead and damage this lower part and you don't want to see scrape marks across there. So I would not do this unless you've practiced sharpening knives for quite a while, especially with the hone. But once you know what you're doing, it actually is fairly simple and it works really well. Now these knives are so dull that my goniometer would not pick up the angle. That's very typical. If you have a knife that's super, super dull, and this is really dull, it's not going to throw the pattern and show you the degree of the knife. So what do you do? You revert to the magic marker method where I take the marker and I rub it right along the edge, just on that apex, right on this part, right here, the very, very edge. And then I know with these knives, and these are real Japanese knives, they're not Chinese knives that say they're Japanese knives or other knives. This is from Japan, these are real Japanese knives. And typically they're around a 12 degree, 13 degree angle, especially when it comes to these single bevels. Actually even, I have one that is a 10 degree. So I knew it was somewhere around there. So I did this and I took a guess that it was around 13 degrees just from the feel, my eye. I knew I'd be close and I got lucky. It was 13 degrees when I went in and did this. It took off the marker perfectly on this and did not move down into that lower area that I told you to be careful about so that you don't damage it. Now, how did I do it? Well, first of all, you have the base, a 15 and a 20, and that's not gonna work. So you have the angle mates from Hone. These are accessories you get. They're included in the, the Pro Accessories kit that comes with all these other discs, the ceramic and the angle mates. Now you can get all of these uh, through honesharp.com. I have some of these in my uh, Amazon store. So if you look there, I've got all my knife accessories and I've got straps and oils and everything else you need to sharpen your knives. But I also have um, multiple items from Hone that are available as well. Now to get 13 degrees, I have the 15 degree side on this, a two degree angle mate, and that's gonna go ahead and put this at 13 degrees. I want this knife to be absolutely rock solid, no movement at all. It's a very straight knife. I wanna make sure that there's no bend in this or flex. So I'm gonna use the extender as well. This is the new extender from Hone. Absolutely essential for the larger knives. It makes it so much easier. And this locks on to the device like so. It's got a magnet right here, clips in. So just put it, that's it, sticks down. Now you've got your extender and you can put this on here as well. And now you have 13 degrees. You can also move this out if you wanna do it all the way across as well and 
I've got 13 degrees. Now with this single bevel, you have to make sure that this goes on properly and it's only one side. So I'm gonna do it with the handle away from me, you need to be careful. And I'm gonna put this right on here like so. And as you can see, I am now at a really nice position. I've got the blade coming up on both sides and I can then use the hone to get this going. Now, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this handle is down. I have all that metal exposed and I'm gonna start out with the 700 grit. Now you can go down to the 400 grit, which is really too coarse for this knife. This knife's in really bad shape. It's super dull. I see a little bit of chips here on the tip. I'm gonna take some metal off of this and we're into the 700. And remember, we don't have to rotate this now. It's gonna be one side only. There's no going back and forth and removing a burr. I'm gonna show you what we do about that. And so we're gonna start with this and you're gonna say, ooh, sounds coarse, it is. And if you look at this knife after I do that, you'll notice that there is no rubbing or damage below that apex at all. And that's really critical because if you do that, you'll damage the knife. So we're gonna go ahead and do this for a, couple, a minute or so. Do, now, now this, hear that tip? It's not too horrible, but listen to this. Oh yeah, that's, you can see. And then you come towards the back, it's kind of bad, but right here, that's where you can tell they're doing all their cutting is right in this area right here because of that harshness, that's the dullest part of the knife. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that and get out those uneven parts. And it's looking pretty good. We're getting that steel out there. And you won't do it a whole lot because this is a pretty thin, pretty thin steel. There's a slight chip on the tip that I'm gonna go ahead and use this 700 on right here to get that tip, get a little bit of that out. Now I'm gonna take the 700 off. Now we're gonna switch from the 700 over to the 1000, which is the number two right here. So we're switching over to that, number two. Now we're gonna give this a go. And normally I do the best test to see where we're at. Um, I know these knives right here are definitely around a thousand as far as the sharpness, super dull. They wouldn't have cut the media at all. So I really didn't waste my time just because I knew that. You've seen a lot of my videos where I show you the, the start and the end. I'll show you the end on this. Um, you just have to trust me, but let me tell you, these are really dull. And you can hear right here. So smooth back here, up front, not bad. Here's the middle. You hear that really harsh rubbing. So that's the part that really needs to be worked on, not so much the tip. And you don't have to go all the way strokes every time. You can if it's an even knife, but if it's not even, I'll go ahead and get this back where it feels good. And now I, that middle part, I'll go ahead and work on this middle part to even that out so that I'm nice and even across the whole knife. And again, we're at 13 degrees, a very narrow, narrow knife. And we're not gonna work on a burr. It's not the goal here. The goal is we're gonna keep sharpening and get that really sharp. We're not gonna work to get that burr over the top. It's just not necessary when it comes to this knife. And we actually don't wanna do it because we don't wanna to have to start worrying about creating a different angle on the side. It should be a smooth angle. And we have a ceramic so we can get that burr off, but I do not try to generate a burr with this type of knife. That's how I do it. It works for me. Now we're much smoother now, all the way across. See, not that harshness, kind of even all the way across. You hear the noise? That's what we want. Not that get real grinding. Okay, now this is, get this here. Where's my towel? <laughs> White towel, my wife's gonna kill me, that's okay. Shh. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this off a little bit. You can see that. Okay, so we're getting the steel off there and we're getting a really nice edge Hard to see, a really nice edge forming on this. Okay, I'm gonna go back now. We're gonna go to the 2000, 2000 on this one. And this is gonna take a little bit of while, so we'll go ahead and cut, because I'm gonna be doing this for a couple minutes. You can see now that this blade is really getting a nice little edge there, the apex. And we're gonna finish off now with a couple more passes on the ceramic right here, just to make sure that's nice and buttery smooth. 
no friction, you don't feel anything catching at all. And then we're gonna go to the leather strop. Now the leather strop is really important. It actually does continue to sharpen the blade. It also polishes that apex and it allows you to actually control the polish on that knife and the angle on that knife. And this is a very low angle. Uh, being 13 degrees, flat is here. Uh, if we lift up probably about maybe that much, we're already at 13 degrees. It's very quick. I can actually feel it because here's the flat part of the knife. If I lift it up, I can feel right where that edge is at. And you can see it's, if I lift it up, it's right there. It's super, super thin. But we're gonna go ahead and do this and get this, get this leather strop going. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on this at all. Okay, now we're gonna do the final best test on the best chart. You'll see the chart here. That's 2000, absolutely horrific. And now we're gonna do the final test to see where this is at. Again, it's a single bevel. These are not easy to do. I actually did a, a micro bevel uh, on this. So I did a 13 degree and then I put a slight micro bevel on that as well to get that thing as sharp as I could. This thing was so bad, I worked on it so long, I finally said, you know what? It is where it is, and this is where we're gonna go. We'll go ahead and tear this out. So this is a zero on here. Looks like 142. Let's see if I can do this without disturbing it. You can see this, 142. And again, I did use my leather strop from Hone. Gotta have that. Comes the Pro Accessories Kit. We use the Hone, the 700, the 1000, the 2000, and the ceramic. And we sharpen this knife to absolute razor sharpness. I'm so happy with it. So make sure you get your hone, get your accessories kit. And this is the next review. This is the hone mirror finish kit. Something I actually worked on and collaborated with hone on. They made it happen. We actually were both testing at the same time. And then we talked to each other and said, hey, we figured this out. And I said, well, what did you figure out? And I said, well, what did you figure out? And we both at the same time said, the mirror finish kit. And we're gonna test this out so you can see how to get a mirror finish on your knives. I'm excited about this one. Again, another in the line of incredible products from Hone, honesharp.com. We'll see you on the next one. Smoke on, baby.